The Last Day of School, written by Louise Borden. During the last week of May, the big countdown began. There were only ten days left on the Albert E. Chapman Elementary School calendar. Then there were nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Finally, June 4th! It was the last day of school for the Chapman students and staff, including Mrs. Mallory's third graders. Thank you, terrific students. What an A plus year! That morning, Mrs. Mallory wrote her last daily message of the year neatly in chalk on the blackboard in room six, just as the line of yellow buses rumbled up the school driveway at 8 20 a.m. and began to unload the students one by one. Room six had tall windows that led in the sunlight, shiny wooden floors that creaked, a cage with a hamster named Rhoda. And twenty three desks for the students whom Mrs. Mallory had taught all year. It was a classroom full of books by Mrs. Mallory's favorite authors and other important things that third graders use, like graphs and maps and computers and folders and more folders. On the wall above the teacher's desk was a round faced clock with two black hands that scratched the minutes by. Tick. Tick, and never seem to keep the right time. I love teaching these students. We learn from each other, so we're double trouble in here. Mrs. Mallory always joked each September on parent information night. But like every school year, this one had somehow zoomed by. Papers and projects had been taken home. And books and school supplies had been put away during the countdown days and were stacked neatly on Mrs. Mallory's shelves for the coming summer months. Now, on this morning of June 4th, 519 Chapman students, from wiggly kindergartners to cool fifth graders, crowded through the front doors and hurried down the hallways to their classrooms for the very last time this school year. Everyone was talking in extra loud voices about the special picnic at lunchtime. Fifth graders only! About the giant lollipops that Mrs. Graff, the school secretary, was handing out to the kids who had had perfect attendance. About the longer recess scheduled for all grades. About the snazzy, jazzy music that Mr. Frazier, the principal, was playing over the PA system. And about the farewell gifts. Some of the students had in their backpacks to give to their teachers. Matthew Perez listened to the Chapman students he passed in the hallways on his way to room six. He peeked in his backpack to check the package tied with ribbon and then smiled to himself as he walked into his classroom on his last day as a third grader. Mrs. Mallory was going to love his goodbye gift. Matt loved sports, and he was as quick as lightning in the football games during recess. When the principal joined in and played quarterback, Matt was a whiz at catching Mr. Frazier's passes, dodging his classmates, and running with the ball for a touchdown. Matt was also good at numbers and time. Every day he wore a blue Chicago Cubs wristwatch to school. Matt always knew the correct time, down to the exact minute and second. For the past year, Mrs. Mallory had assigned Matt a special job of his own, official timekeeper of room six. Several times during the school day, Matt quietly checked his Cubs watch and then stepped up onto Mrs. Mallory's desk chair and stood on his tiptoes to reset the hands on the classroom clock to the correct time. Matt knew to the minute when recess was about to begin. He knew it was time for his class to go to gym. And music and library and art. And he knew when the lunch bell was about to buzz loudly throughout Chapman Elementary School. During the countdown days, Mrs. Mallory and her class had attended to important final details before the end of the school year. Overdue library books were found and returned, desks were cleaned out and scrubbed, 
Students rummaged through the lost and found. On each busy day, the minutes ticked by on the wall clock, which Matt carefully monitored with his cub's watch. More than once, Mrs. Mallory walked past Matt's desk, shook her head, and sighed. <sighs> How will my class ever stay on schedule next year without our terrific timekeeper? Near the teacher's overflowing desk, a to-do list was pinned on the wall and checked off task by task. Plants were given away. Posters were rolled up. Then Mrs. Mallory held a special vacation home for Rhoda raffle because everyone had offered to keep the popular hamster over the summer. Now, on the morning of June 4th, Mrs. Mallory stood in the doorway of room 6 and greeted her students. She waved to a group of second graders who were headed down the hall to their classroom. Some of them hoped she would be their teacher next fall, but they wouldn't know until they opened their report cards, signed by Mr. Frazier, at the end of the day. Today, Mrs. Mallory would be saying goodbye to each of her third graders. Next fall, they would be moving on to fourth grade and to other Chapman teachers. She would miss these kids. After a wonderful year as their teacher, Mrs. Mallory knew her students like a mother hen knows her chicks. June 4th at Chapman Elementary School was indeed a day to remember. Some classes wrote funny last day poems. The first graders made last day hats and wore them in a spur of the moment parade. The departing fifth graders gave Mr. Fields, the custodian, a special key ring with his name on it. The art teacher brought in paintbrush cookies for her last day classes. Mrs. Bell, the gym teacher, wore a t-shirt that said, Summer! The school cooks put on chef hats and sang to students in the cafeteria line. And the second graders made awesome year badges for the bus drivers. The last day was an ending and a beginning all mixed up together. A day when most of the Chapman teachers looked a bit frazzled from the busy weeks in May. Mr. Fraser emailed hastily to the staff, We're almost to the finish line. In room six, everyone swapped lists of favorite books for summer reading. Then students began to whisper among themselves and slowly, shyly, one by one, they presented Mrs. Mallory with her goodbye cards and presents. Matt stood at the edge of the group, crowded around his teacher's desk. He craned his neck for a better look and watched Mrs. Mallory open a bar of pink soap from Sarah Dryden, then a box of chocolates from James Romano, then a book from Meredith Alvarez, then a number one teacher mug from his best friend AJ, then a long feather pen from Nikki Gregg. No one had brought anything like Matt's goodbye present, which was still in his backpack. Mrs. Mallory dabbed her eyes with a handkerchief when she read through the thank you cards and notes. She sniffled again when she snapped a photo of each of her third graders. Matt slicked his hair back and smiled broadly when she took his picture. He'd loved his year in Mrs. Mallory's class. Then he remembered it was his last day as a third grader. Next year, he wouldn't be in room six. He'd have a new group of classmates, all fourth graders. He'd be in a classroom far down the hall and up the stairs on the second floor of Chapman Elementary School. Cool! Would his fourth grade teacher be Mrs. Quinn? Or Mr. Bugliari? Or Miss Burdett? Time was running out. Still, Matt waited. He wanted to wait and hand his teacher her gift at the very end of the day. Nobody else seemed to notice that the day was a day to remember. The whole school was too busy saying goodbyes or having fun or celebrating or asking how next year could ever match the one that had just gone by. Then, just as everyone in room six was about to explode with last day excitement, the two room mothers arrived with a big tray of ice cream bars and announced that Mr. Fraser had given permission for a kickball game on the playground. Mrs. Mallory's class lined up and headed outdoors. Matt cheered for his winning team, and he rounded the bases with his usual lightning speed. 
Of course, that day Matt had still done his job and made sure that Mrs. Mallory's clock was keeping the right time. Suddenly, it was 2.20 p.m. The 2.30 early dismissal bell would be buzzing soon. Everyone checked inside their clean desks for anything left behind and zipped up their backpacks. The countdown began again, but now students were counting minutes instead of days. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Matt pulled the wrapped gift from his backpack and looked around the room for Mrs. Mallory. He'd surprise her right after the bell rang. Time to get ready. Time to go to your bus group. I'll be thinking of all you this summer. And here's a goodbye hug for you, and for you, and for you. Matt heard his teacher's warm, familiar voice above the final stacking of chairs upon desks in room six. Then, buzz! Throughout the Chapman classrooms and hallways, students and teachers clapped and cheered. Yes! School was out! No more homework! No more school lunches! No more tests! Tomorrow, kids could sleep late. Mrs. Mallory's class joined in the pandemonium. Lines of students dashed out of the school to their buses. Remember, no running in the halls. The entire building echoed with voices. Everyone was calling to friends. Goodbye, goodbye, see you next fall. Happy summer. Matt turned round and round, scanning the classroom. Where was his teacher? Puzzled, he waited by her desk as the rest of the class hurried out the door. Hey, where's Mrs. Mallory? he asked. Bus duty, Nikki yelled back. Matt raced out of room six. Dodging a slow line of kindergartners, he ran down the crowded hall with his present and his backpack. Over the PA system, Mr. Frazier's calm voice was announcing the bus dismissal. Bus 9 and bus 14 are loading now. Last call. Bus 5, walk to the right, please. Have a great summer, everyone. Bus 5 was Matt's bus. Matt looked to the left and then to the right. Everywhere, dozens of students were in motion. Where was Mrs. Mallory? He had to say goodbye. He had to say thank you. He couldn't get on his bus, not yet. The seconds were ticking by. Matt stood outside the school building in the warm sunshine, holding his present under his arm. He didn't even care that the red ribbon bow was crushed as flat as a pancake. He saw Mrs. Bell in her summer t-shirt. He saw Miss Knox, the music teacher, talking to a parent. He saw Mr. Fields directing bus traffic. Where was Mrs. Mallory? Matt blinked and felt a small flutter of missing a good friend panic. He heard the engines of the remaining buses revving up and saw students' faces at every window. He heard AJ calling to him from their favorite seat, telling Matt to hurry up. Matt grabbed the present tightly and sprinted toward bus five. And then there was Mrs. Mallory, standing on the steps of his bus, wildly waving her arms at him. Matthew Perez! Oh, Matt, I've been looking for you. I didn't get to say goodbye in the room because I had to rush off to bus duty. I couldn't remember your bus number, and I looked and looked on some other buses. Then I finally remembered it was bus five, but you weren't on it. Mrs. Mallory leaned down and gave Matt a mother hen hug. I wanted you to know how much I am going to miss you next year. Matt sighed with relief. I've been looking for you too, Mrs. Mallory. I wanted to say goodbye too. He handed the box to his teacher. Here's your present. I wanted to give it to you the minute the dismissal bell rang. I wrapped it in blue paper for the cubs. It's smaller, but it keeps the right time. And there, with everyone on bus five watching from their windows, Mrs. Mallory opened the farewell gift from her official timekeeper. 
Overhead, a long stream of white cloud moved slowly across the June sky. Matt's teacher laughed out loud and dabbed her eyes with her handkerchief at the very same time. And when Mrs. Mallory hugged him again, she told Matthew Perez it was the best last day of school that she could ever remember. The end. This read aloud has been brought to you by Time to Read to Us. Hit the subscribe button for more kid friendly read alouds. Thanks for watching!